talking about today is lesson 12 in unit 1. It is ordering of rational numbers. Okay. Um, the homework that goes with this is page 28 to 31. If you could not use a calculator, how would you change 511 to a decimal? Well, if you couldn't use a calculator, you would divide 5 by 11. Put a decimal point. Add a bunch of zeros. 11 goes into 50 four times. That's 44. I subtract, I get 6, bring down a zero. 11 goes into 60 five times. That's 55. I subtract, I get 5, bring down a zero. Notice something happening here. 11 goes into 50 four times. That's 44. I subtract, I get 6, bring down a zero. 11 goes into 60 five times. That's 55. I subtract, I get 5, bring down 0. I could go on forever and ever, but this is what we call a repeating decimal. And I'm going to write it as 45 with a line over it. That shows that it's 0.454545 forever and ever. That's a repeating decimal. That's how you change from a fraction to a decimal. And if you don't know what it is off the top of your head, which you wouldn't know, 511, you die. Alright, we are going to order rational numbers. R rational numbers are fractions, decimals, and percents. Um, use common sense. Is it close to zero, close to one, or close to a half? A lot of times you can use common sense. On the number right, the farther left a number is, the smaller it is. This is helpful when ordering negative numbers. If two numbers are too close to order using common sense, then convert them so they are both decimals or both fractions with a common denominator. All right. Let's take a look at this. Place the following integers in order from least to greatest. Use a number line. So 5 is here. Negative 2 is here. 3 is here. Negative 4 is here. So, what would be, we're going from least to greatest. Least would be negative 4, then negative 2, then 3, then 5. This negative, the negative screw kids up. Think about it. Farther left is smaller. So, negative 4 is smaller than negative 2. Alright, order these numbers from least to greatest. Let's use common sense. Which number is obviously the smallest? Well, one fourth. Isn't that a small number? One quarter? Yes. It's closest to zero. Which number is obviously the biggest? Eight ninths. That's almost one because nine ninths would be one. That takes care of this one and this one. Now, five eighths and three sevenths. Let's compare them to one half. Half of eight is four, so four eighths would be one half. So isn't that a little more than a half? Greater than one half. Three sevenths. What's half of seven? Half of seven is 3.5. So 3.5 out of seven would be a half. This is a little less than a half. So three sevenths is smaller than five eighths. And I did not find a common denominator. I just used common sense. Sometimes you'll have to find a common denominator or change it to decimal. Okay, order these numbers from least to greatest. All right, these, I think we're going to change to decimals, especially if it's negative 5 eighths. If I do negative 5 eighths, I will get negative 0.625. So, which number is farthest left on the number line? It would be negative 9,500. Then, negative 5 eighths. Then, negative 0.175. That's my negative. Now, these two, 2 thirds and 1.7. 2 thirds is less than 1, so that goes next. And then 1 and 7 tenths. Order these numbers from least to greatest. I'm going to use um, our estimate. The square root of 36 is 6. So this is the square root. 
to 39, it's going to be a little bit more than 6. I'm going to say like 6.2, approximately, maybe 6.3. Negative 4.9 and then negative 5. 